Well, good evening, saints of God. It is so good to be back with you again on our Wednesday night Bible study stream. So this is Pastor Chris Sutley, if you don't know me, and I just want to welcome you uh, to the family tonight. Uh, I pray that your week so far has been supernatural, that you've been overcoming. You know, Jojo and I have uh, had a great week, lots of things going on, but uh, we did get a uh, an opportunity to go out, take the boat out for the very first time, a couple, couple days or about half day anyway, and do a little fishing and just relax. How many know it's pretty important to find some time to rest and relax in your life? And so that's what we did. And we're uh, so excited uh, to be back with you here. We're energized and ready to go. Praise the Lord. So uh, grab uh, something to take some notes with. Grab your Bible. And let's get into the teaching that uh, the Lord has given me for tonight. It's pretty interesting, uh, and I'll share this little testimony, the last two weeks especially, uh, not even the day after uh, we broadcast this teaching, uh, I, we get uh, feedback from two people saying, Pastor Chris, you're not going to believe what you preached or what you taught on Wednesday night was exactly what I needed the next day. I had to put it into practice. And, you know, all I can say is I wish I was that smart to know that you were going to need it. But the Holy Spirit is that smart and he knows exactly what you need. And I believe what I'm going to teach uh, tonight is exactly what you're going to need this week in some situation or some form. Amen. But let's, uh, let's pray. Let's uh, join our faith together. Let's release our faith, actually. Let's release our faith for what God wants to do in us and through us. And, you know, sometimes <clears throat> teachings can be sound, uh, I guess, sort of very basic, uh, 
you know, back to school type things. But you know what? It's the basics that help you win. You know, my father uh, was a big baseball fan, played a lot of baseball himself, was my coach growing up in high school, uh, even into Legion ball and college ball. And uh, when we hit the diamond for practice, we practice the fundamentals day in and day out, day in and day out. And you'll talk to any athlete and they'll tell you the exact same thing, that you just need to practice the basics of that sport, whatever it is. Because when you get in the game, uh, you don't have time to think. You want to be able to just react. And because you've practiced those things, uh, that's what many times separates a good athlete from a bad athlete. And, and I believe it's very similar for us uh, in the spiritual realm, because unless we're uh, studying and meditating and praying about certain things, uh, maybe we don't need them right now, but when the circumstance or the situation arises, guess what? The Holy Spirit is able to just bring that thing right out of your heart, and you'll just amaze yourself at how you, or what you say or how you react or whatever the situation might be. And so that's, that's the importance of these Wednesday night teachings. So let's pray. Let's believe God. Let's release our faith. And uh, we'll get right into what uh, the Lord has for us tonight. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We just bless you. We bless you, the God of heaven, the God of creation. We just bless you tonight. And we're thanking you, Lord, that uh, even though we're separated by distance tonight, uh, that there we are still one in the Spirit because there's no time or distance or space in the Spirit of God. And so we're so thankful that we can come together as a family, as a church family, study your word, and grow as a result of that word. So I'm thanking you tonight as that word goes down deep in our hearts that it will not be stolen. Satan, we put you on notice. You cannot steal this word out of the hearts of God's people tonight. But that word is going to go down deep. It's going to put down roots. It's going to begin to grow, mature and put out forth branches uh, of wonderful fruit. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, praise the Lord. Well, let's get right into it. Let me find our teaching here. So here we go. So this is session 19, and the topic tonight is 70 times 7. Of course, uh, you can probably figure out what we're going to talk about. Yes, we're going to talk about forgiveness. So go with me to Matthew chapter 18. We are going to look at verse, starting in verse 21, and this is out of the King James. And it reads like this, it says, Then came Peter to him. Of course, that's Jesus. Peter comes to Jesus and says, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus says unto him, I say not unto you until seven times, but un unto you seventy times seven. <laughs> seventy times seven. I can almost guarantee you that Peter was not ready for that answer from Jesus. In fact, I, I, I sort of suspect that there was a little bit of an unspoken agenda in Peter when he asked that question because uh, he was probably dealing with that situation or circumstance right now, and he's probably fed up with this person or with the situation or circumstance, and so he wanted an excuse to be able to not forgive them anymore. Well, <laughs> Jesus did not let him off the hook, amen? Uh, and he doesn't let you and I off the hook either. So, again, our series that we've been looking at is all dealing with love and, and enemies of love, if you will. And here's a, here's a big one uh, on forgiveness. So, in order to be successful in your love walk in this life, you have to develop a habit of forgiving people, forgiving situations and circumstances, forgiving uh, <clears throat> even the most frequent offenses. And I know uh, in our flesh, we don't want to do that. But what we have to do, uh, I'm going to use this word, we have to develop a habit, a habit of forgiving even the most frequent uh, <clears throat> offenses. You know, the word habit simply means it's a manner of conducting yourself. It's something that you do so often that it just becomes second nature to you, really. 
but here's the thing. It's something that you have to choose. Uh, God's not going to choose it for you. Uh, the enemy wants you to choose his way, but we have to choose the way God wants us to, to react, and that is uh, walking in forgiveness. You know, when, when somebody says to you, now watch this, well, I just can't forgive them. And I've heard that, I can't tell you over the years, and I'm talking about Christians, how many times I've heard people say that, Pastor, I just can't forgive them. What they're really saying is, and they don't maybe not even realize it, they're saying, I am choosing not to forgive. Okay, I'm choosing not to forgive. Them. It's not that they can't forgive them. It's that they are choosing not to forgive them. And so <clears throat> it is so extremely important to refuse to hold on to those those grudges. Uh, you know, those people who treat us unkindly again and again and again and again, uh, because there, there are consequences to that. Uh, growing up. Uh, Lord just brought this to my remembrance here uh, as I'm speaking. My uh, my grandfather, uh, Jim Sutley, came over from Italy when he was about seven years old. Uh, my grandmother, Lena, she was a uh, full-blood Italian, but she was born and raised here in the United States. And I remember my parents talking about certain situations uh, in my grandparents' life where someone had offended my grandmother and years later, she just refused for, to forgive. And of course, uh, I don't know if they were born again. I, I, they were raised Catholic. Uh, you know, that's up to God. But the point is, uh, that's the way the nature of our flesh wants to react. And we have to understand here, uh, if someone is mistreating you or uh, causing you even bodily harm or whatever, uh, you're not supposed to allow that abuse to continue. That's not what I'm saying here at all. Most certainly not. Uh, you have to put up some boundaries. But, uh, you know, God, yes, God has commanded us to forgive, but that does not mean uh, whatever the circumstance or situation is, if, again, if there's physical harm going on, does not mean that you're supposed to put yourself back in harm's way. No, that's not. That would be stupid. You know what you need to do is you need to uh, tune yourself into the voice of the Holy Spirit, and I believe that He will lead you and guide you and help you distance yourself from someone who is repeatedly mistreating you. But you have to understand, we still do that in love. And we still do that as forgiving them, even as we go. Amen. Now, here's where so many people make a mistake. They will say, again, something like, well, I can't do that. I cannot forgive them, especially after what they did to me. Forgiving them is just too hard for me. Well, <laughs> the, the reality of the situation is that if you choose not to forgive them, uh, using that excuse that it's just too hard, the result is going to be that unforgiveness in your life will make your life extremely hard in many, many ways. You know, we think, you know, in some twisted mental thought pattern, I guess, that it, because we refuse to forgive them, we're, we're going to put them in some kind of jail. We're going to keep them bound up. We're going to keep them, uh, you know, wounded or whatever when, the truth of the matter is the exact opposite is happening. We are putting ourselves in a jail. We are putting ourselves in captivity. We're wounding ourselves because we for, for we refuse to do what God has told us to do, and that is to forgive. Now, again, just because you forgive doesn't give, you're not giving them license to continue to do that in your life. But if they do, even if they do, Jesus said, you have to forgive them 70 times 7. Here's the interesting thing. Uh, it is a ve very well documented in the medical field that unforgiveness actually will weaken your immune system. And it will expose you to more sickness, more disease. And I believe a lot of people die, get sick and die early uh, in their lives, much, much earlier than they really should 
because they are harboring unforgiveness in our heart. And so we can see, man, this is this is a serious matter tonight, folks. We have to uh, we have to take care of business the way God told us to take care of business. Because if you harbor unforgiveness in your life, it's going to darken your mind. It's going to darken your thinking. It's going to manipulate your thinking in wrong ways. It, it's going to take away your joy. And right there's the key, because what do we know about joy? The Lord said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So if that unforgiveness is taking away your joy, it's taking away your strength. And uh, the biggest thing is also uh, when you are in unforgiveness, it, it allows us or, or keeps us, I should say, from receiving revelation from God. Oh, my goodness. So the fact that you choose or we choose to uh, forgive dictates that every day, uh, let me, I think I said that wrong. The fact that we choose not to forgive, okay, means that every day at some point that offense is still on your mind. No matter what you're doing, no matter where you go, no matter what kind of job you're doing, or if you're with your family or friends or, or even at church on Sunday morning or in a session like this on Wednesday night, it's that offense is still on your mind. And instead of, instead of being able to enjoy the day that the Lord has made for you, you're going to go through your day, you're going to be aggravated, you're going to be tense, it's going to increase your blood pressure, you're going to continue to think about how you've been wronged, basically it clouds everything you do, amen? And this opens the door to the enemy of your soul, and again, it's a John 10.10 10 thing, it allows him to come in and to steal and to kill and destroy, and because we know uh, from teaching, but past, that's the only reason that the, Satan comes anyway, right? So, you can think of it this way. If you feel you cannot forgive the person who wronged you uh, for their sake, <laughs> then choose to forgive them for your sake. Yeah, think about that a minute. Do it for your sake. Look at what Jesus said. This is pretty serious here. He said in Matthew 6 and 15, if you don't forgive others, your father will not forgive your sins. Oh boy, let's read that again. Again, who's speaking here? The master himself, Jesus Christ. He's speaking. He says, if you don't forgive others, your father will not forgive your sins. And I believe that many people un misunderstand the process, that process, I suppose, that needs to take place right here. Uh, <clears throat> when someone wrongs you, I mean, your emotions are up and down. I understand that. And many people will make, again, make that statement, well, I just can't forgive them. But you know, understand, when we make a statement like that, it's based on our emotions. It's based on how we're feeling in the flesh. It is not. And I emphasize it is not based on what the Word of God says. Amen. And if you and I are going to be obedient to the Word of God in our life, if we're going to be, be obedient to do what the Master himself has told us, no matter how mad or angry or upset we become, and I understand those emotions are real. They're raw sometimes. I mean, those emotions can keep you in turmoil. Uh, where you can't sleep at night, you toss and turn, it's constantly on your mind. Uh, you just can't get any peace, you can't get any rest. Uh, and, you know, you think about what you're going to say back to them, the letter you're going to write, or the note you're going to say, you're going to call them on the phone, or when you see them in person, you know, uh, you're thinking about how you're going to repay them, how you're going to attack them, because they attacked you. But if you do that, every minute that goes by, you're allowing Satan to ruin your life. You know, I like to say it like this. Unforgiveness is the gift that keeps on giving. And folks, that is not good either. Unforgiveness is the gift that keeps on giving. Now, don't misunderstand me. You know, I, I'm, I'm not just, uh, you know, a pastor that's just wet behind the ears, meaning, you know, I haven't been in this for a while. I know there's been people a lot longer than I have uh, praise God for that. But, you know, it's not, not like Jojo and I just started yesterday. But we understand that there have been some terrible, terrible things 
that people have done to people, okay? Maybe you were sexually abused or mistreated as a child. And, you know, for whatever reason, your parents didn't guard you. Or maybe it was a parent. And those are horrible things. Uh, there are atrocious things that happen to people. And I'm not downplaying any of those by any means. But regardless of how bad it was, it does not let you off the hook. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If for some reason that you feel like you cannot forgive that person, then you just simply have to ask God for his help. And I can guarantee you when you ask God for help, he will come to your rescue. Amen. And this is where our faith comes into this whole situation and circumstance. Because we are commanded by God to forgive, even if our emotions, even if our feelings are telling us there's no way that we can do that, by faith, you can forgive. Amen. Uh, this is a good reminder, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Uh, you all know it, but it's just good to remind ourselves we live by faith, not by what we see. We live how? By faith, not by what we see. Uh, by, by what we see is talking about the fleshly, emotional realm. You know, all this, all, you know, the sight, sound, taste, touch. That's your sense realm. And if you choose to basically live in the sense realm, it's just going to cause you a lot of trouble. And it's not going to lead you in the right direction. So simply go to your father and say something like this. Say, Father, I know that you have commanded me to forgive so-and-so and what he or she did to me. And I know, Lord, in my own self, I know that I just don't have the strength I don't have the power, nor do I even have the will to do that, but by faith, Lord. And because you have commanded me to forgive, I choose, there it is, I choose to forgive that person once and for all. And as uh, you freely forgave all of my sins in Jesus Christ, I freely forgive them. And then from that time on, don't back down from that. I don't care what you feel. I don't care how upset your emotions get. Uh, because if you continue to think about that and dwell on it and, and talk about it, it's just going to get more difficult and difficult. If you have forgiven them, uh, anytime the enemy sits, you know, sits on your shoulder and tries to remind you what they said or what they did, just say, shut up, enemy. Shut up, Satan. I've forgiven them. And by faith, I have forgiven them. I'll be honest with you, our, our family right now is going through a very grievous situation. And there's a person uh, in this situation that has made me so mad and so angry, and I just want to slap that person. Man, I just, I want to call names. And, but you know what? I, you know, God says to forgive. So I have to, I'm almost constantly daily saying, Lord, I forgive that person. Lord, I forgive that person. <clears throat> Lord, I forgive that person. And it's, I'm just choose to forgive it in the, in the flesh realm and my emotions. I don't want to do that. I'm just being honest with you, but by faith, I'm forgiven that person. Amen. No, I have forgiven her. I'm not going to entertain those thoughts again. I take those thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. And there's a big key. Go to second Corinthians chapter 10 with me for a moment. <clears throat> this is verses three to five. Let's read it. Out of the Amplified Classic, it says, For though we live and walk in the flesh, we are not carrying on our warfare according to the flesh and using mere human weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and for the destruction of strongholds. Praise God. Ever had a few strongholds in your life? Praise God. Well, the, here's the, I want to give you a definition first of strongholds. I've, I've shared this before, but uh, it's always good to re reinforce it in our lives. Here's the definition of a stronghold that the Lord gave to me. I'm not, <coughs> excuse me. I'm not saying that this is the only one, but it's certainly a major part of it. He said, 
de the definition of a stronghold is a demonically induced pattern of thinking that derails the full and complete plan of God coming to pass in your life. Amen? So, what do we know from 2 Corinthians 10? First of all, we know that God has something that's going to defeat those demonically induced patterns of thinking that we have set up in our minds. And Paul is using the concept here of taking, taking prisoners of war. But in this case, uh, the prisoners are held captive, uh, or the prisoners that are held captive, I should say, are those faulty patterns of thought that, watch this, defy the authority of God in our lives. So, and this is a difficult thing to say, but I have to say it tonight. Anyone who refuses to forgive someone, and again, no matter how bad it was, if they know what the Word of God says about forgiveness, if they choose to for, or I should say, if they refuse to forgive, then they are in rebellion against God. And this is what God said, okay, this is what God said about King Saul because of his disobedience. Let's look at this. This is in 1 Samuel, verse 15. He says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. And then he says, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. Well, maybe God's not setting you up as king, but I can guarantee you many of the things that God has for you will not be, he will not be able to do because of the rebellion in your life. And watch this. Most Christians do not realize that witchcraft is a work of the flesh. Yeah, you heard me right. Witchcraft is a work of the flesh, and it is a result of being disobedient. So don't take my word for it. I'm not going to go in there tonight, but go to Galatians 5, read about it, and, and prove it for yourself that the Bible says exactly that in King James, that witchcraft is one of the works of the flesh. Okay, so let's go back to 2 Corinthians 10 now. Let's read the rest of the verse here. He says in verse 5, <clears throat> Inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings, and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, and we lead every thought and purpose away captive, there we go, we lead those thoughts captive, how? Into the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Now here's where people still miss it. And this is where teaching and preaching comes in. Revelation comes in. So many people have the wrong idea, exactly from this scripture, from 2 Corinthians 10, that they are taking their thoughts captive, but is that really true? What are you saying, Pastor Chris? Well, look at it again. It says, let's go over there. It says, we lead every thought and purpose away captive. Okay, that's your job. To lead every thought and purpose away, every you know, every thought and purpose that defies God's word and his authority. But where do you lead it? Because we already know that in our flesh we cannot defeat the plans and purposes of the enemy. You know that, right? Then why would we think that we could possibly lead every thought and purpose captive in our own strength? Well, the truth is we can't. I can't. And you can't. No, we lead every thought and purpose away captive. How? into the obedience of Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It was and is the obedience of the anointed one that is able to defeat those thoughts and those purposes in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me end with this tonight. Go over to Romans chapter 5. Again, the Amplified Classic Edition, it says, For just as by one man's disobedience, in other words, Adam, his failing to hear, his heedlessness and carelessness, the many were constituted sinners, so by one man's obedience, the many will be constituted righteous, 
made acceptable to God and brought into right standing with him. And of course, he's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So <clears throat> when you are tempted to rethink about a situation or circumstance, about how badly someone has treated you, what they did to you, how they they harmed you, whatever. Just remember that Jesus has paid the ultimate price for every wrong to be made right. And he has the power. Thank God he has. It. He has the power to bring restoration to your life. Amen. God is the God of vengeance. Vengeance, basically, if you look it up, it's basically t talking about justice. God is a God of, he's a just God. And it may not happen <clears throat> in the time frame that we would like it have to have. It may not happen in the, in the, the manner or with the way we think it should happen. But I can guarantee you, ultimately, God will bring justice to your life if you trust him. Justice, vengeance, and recompense, God says, are mine. Amen. And the result is, if you'll do that, if you'll forgive every hurt, every offense, you'll take it captive to the obedience of Christ, the result is that you will live a blessed life, a wonderful life that God has designed you to live. Amen. Galatians, what is it, 2.10, uh, living the good life that God prearranged and made ready for us to live. That's the way the Amplified Classic says it. So let me pray with you because I know without a doubt, some of you right now, tonight, are dealing with hurts. You're dealing with offenses. You're dealing with things that people have said to you, done to you, and it hurts. Believe me, Pastor Jojo and I, we know. You think over 15 years we haven't had people that have come against us, that have hurt us in the church. Man, I, I, I you know, I could, I can't count them even with both hands and toes. But you know what? Over the years, we've learned uh, how to deal with it in a godly way. Yeah, I'm, let's be honest. It hurts initially. It's disappointing sometimes. The, the people that you sometimes you think are the closest to you or the people that are the most faithful to you, or the most accountable to you, are the very ones who turn around and it seems like they, they stab you in the back. But it doesn't matter. God is bigger than all of that. But he wants your life to be a life of forgiveness. He wants you to walk a life of love where there's joy, where there's peace, where there's rest. There's no mental turmoil thinking about how you've been, how you've been mistreated. No, God will take care of that. So, Father, I thank you tonight. Lord, even for JoJo and myself and the, the issues and the things that we're dealing with in our family right now. Lord, we just choose to forgive. We take those thoughts captive into the obedience of Christ. Lord, we lay them down on the altar of God. And I'm thanking you that uh, we go free. We go free. No longer will we be held captive. No longer will we be held in jail because of unforgiveness. But we'll walk free. And I thank you that your word says that he who the Son makes free is free indeed. So I'm thanking you tonight for each and every person, Lord, that they will choose to forgive no matter what the offense. They will choose to cast that care over on you because you care for them. And the result is joy and peace. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, I hope that hit the spot tonight, because I, I know, I just know that someone is dealing with that situation or circumstance in your life. So I just want to remind you, uh, we're continuing to believe God for 150 people in service every Sunday. You know, there are sparks of revival that are, are, are popping up all over our country, and, and just some sometimes some of the most unimaginable, uh, hard to imagine places, I guess. But there are it's happening in churches too, and I'm thinking, why not Faith Life Fellowship? 
And so two scriptures that the Lord has given to me, and of course, uh, we're praying over that on Sunday mornings as well. But Isaiah 54, 2 says, Enlarge the place of your tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of your habitations, and spare not. Lengthen your cords, and strengthen your stakes. That tells me, uh, you know, we need to grow. Uh, whether it's physical growth, or whether it's spiritual growth, or, or a combination of those. And then he says in Deuteronomy 1, 11, May the Lord, the God of your fathers, add to you a thousand times as many as you are, and bless you just as he has promised. So I'm thanking you, God, for blessing us. I'm thanking you for blessing Faith Life Fellowship. I'm thanking you that you are bringing the increase. Just as it says in Acts, you said that the Lord added daily to the church, such as should be added. So we're calling those people in from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We're thanking you for new families, new individuals, uh, college and career people, lots of uh, uh, uh of leadership, Lord, musicians. We're calling in a musician, live live worship with, with uh, guitar players and keyboard players and, and vocalists, Lord. Oh, we're just giving you praise and honor and glory for that. And we thank you, Father, for bringing them in right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, just to encourage you to be a part of the, vi the God-given vision here at Faith Life Fellowship. What is that vision? Well, uh, we're all a part of walking in love, abounding in faith, and manifesting the blessing to all the nations of the earth. And so, Father, we just thank you. Thank you for thank you for being here tonight. What a what a blessing. What an honor to be with you. I pray that God really spoke to you tonight, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on Sunday. We're going to continue uh, what we started on Sunday. Uh, the title was Declaring the Glory of God. I'll tell you, I, I left Sunday just so encouraged, so excited about what God's doing in my own life, what he's doing in our church, what he's doing in our city, what he's doing in this world. And so we're going to continue that. Uh, and as, as we always do, we just end up by saying this. We love you. God loves you. And Jesus is Lord. I've got the victory living inside of me. I got the greater one. I can't hold.